If you want your game to look impressive, just like AAA games, you should consider using good assets. It can be 3D models, it can be skyboxes, textures, shaders. All of these things can make a big difference in the way your game looks. Today we want to talk about different assets, kinds of them, where to find them and how to use them to make it a little bit easier for you if you are new to game development. This is Rosebud AI. My name is Peter and I'm joined by Jason as usual. Hi, Jason. Hey, everyone. Before we start, we want to show a couple of games that look really good already on Rosebud AI. This one is Alien Eve Online, sort of. We can see that this ship is an amazing 3D model. You also can see the skybox that is a 3D image of surroundings. And um, there might be some other things. So for that, um, I remixed this project. So now we are in the game. We can see it here. We can see the assets and code. All of it is on Rosebud AI. We can clearly see that there's some skyboxes. There's the music that was added to the game. That's also an important asset, but we will not be talking about music in this specific episode. We have the 3D model of the ship. And this ship looks great clearly has the textures has the colors and there can be some tricks jason you told me so this might be a specific file type right this one is glb and that's why we have this nice preview on rosa right now everything's packaged into one file textures everything it's very easy to use there's three major file types you'll see when it comes to 3d models you'll have fbx glb and gltf glb and gltf are basically the same thing but they're just kind of different ways of approaching the same general type i think we should also show one of the games you made uh, this is the Dune Explorer. Yes, this one actually made this GLTF. The only difference is that with GLTF, sometimes there's less package in the asset itself and the textures can be separate. But in this one, they were packaged. You don't necessarily have to understand the difference between those two, but GLB and GLTF are the best. You definitely should use those instead of FBX if possible. FBX is very popular though. So you might see it more often. Also an important part of this game is textures on the ground. Well, actually the ground right here is using something called a material. A material mm -hmm. is extremely powerful. And this is how most AAA games that you play that look good. A material is a combination of different textures. Textures are single files that look a certain way. All of them are PNG. Pretty much how they work is that material says, okay, a texture has a cool look, but what if you wanted it to have other things like how rough it is, how the light affects the surface. That's how you see on the ground here, all these like ridges. It looks almost like it's 3D. This is actually all from materials. There's like things that I call like normal or height maps that within a texture, see how high each part of the texture should be compared to the other part, leading to it having like a 3D kind of rough, uneven surface to it. All those combined together into like five or six textures, combining into one thing called a material. That's pretty much what I used here to make the sand look good. And going on here, you see this ground 80 is the sand material, but you see, oh, this ambient occlusion and color. Color is for color. Ambient occlusion is kind of like how light gets blocked. Normal is the height of the different parts of it. And when they all combine together, it ends up having this nice 3D look to it. And it actually is 3D. Like if you zoom in, it actually is 3D uh, differences in the surface, which is really good. I want to show a couple of other games that exist on Rosebud and look extremely impressive. One of them is Abandoned Outpost that's made by GM. This game is just so incredibly impressive. Yeah, this looks great. Like I've played plenty of horror games that are extremely popular, made a lot of money that look like this. So especially for horror, you can like have a small scene with high quality assets like this, keep it dark, and then all of a sudden you have like a really good recipe for a great horror game. This scene, I'm not sure which asset like types GM use, but you can tell that these are not all one thing. These are all individual assets within a larger scene, which is a really good approach because it allows you to actually have more intricate environments like hallways and rooms with things in it. Yeah, you don't want to have just one big block shape that's high quality. You want to have like multiple high quality shapes within an, an environment like this. I want to show one more game that also looks incredibly impressive. This is a Cavernous Caution by mm -hmm. Lord Boots. This looks also amazing. Lord Boots even went as far as in the game itself has like a way of organizing the models to be in different spots, which works really well. Lord Boots actually has mentioned on Discord that he uses OBJ and the reason why he uses it is because it's, the asset type is simpler, which means that he can work with it more in his editors. But even though OBJ and FBX can work, what can happen too much is that you have to have a lot of setup. And the reason why you want to use OBJ in the first place is because OBJ again is established file type. So you're going to see a lot of assets using it. So GLTF and GLB are newer and they're definitely improved which is why they work so smoothly on many platforms. When we say there's more extra work, what do you mean by that? Because I know sometimes people reach out to us like, oh, I upload an asset and it's just showing as a black or like a white, you know, blob. Here is an example of this issue. You can see that I have a cool asset, I have a spaceship, but the asset looks white or look grayish. Like obviously this is not what it's supposed to look like. I could probably go to the asset tab, I could see I have some 
texture shit are supposed to be on the asset, those are not get applied. There's not going to be the same exact thing happening each time. It can look different. Sometimes the assets look very dark. Sometimes they look like the texture is applied, but it's in the wrong spot. It's not matching the actual shape. There's so many issues that can happen when it comes to like applying textures separately like that if you're using file types that are not set up the right way by the creator of the asset. So basically, if um, you're seeing your asset not looking as great as you expected when you were downloading it, you might want to consider looking into the file type and um, see if it has all the textures actually already in it. Jason put together a great list of websites where you can find 3D assets, shaders, textures, materials. The first two you see here are Kenny and Quaternius. These are definitely the two we recommend the most. They support GLTF and GLB, and they do a very good job of packaging the assets in a way that is very easy to use, even within the GLB, GLTF creator community. Kenny has these, Blaster Kit, Rhodes, Mini Golf, yeah, there's a massive variety. So here's an example of one. You have the Toy Car Kit. The package tells you exactly what's inside here. You can see that it's actually Creative Commons, which again, we talked about how these are public domains. So you don't have to worry about any kind of licensing problems. Just hit download. You'll have a folder that has the GLB, GLTF. A lot of times you'll see FBX and OBJ in there too. But again, as we recommended, you can just leave those ones. Focus on the GLTF slash GLB ones. All right, switching over to Quaternius. Same deal. They have some crazy high quality kits that you could definitely make anything you want with. Their assets, it shows you how many models are in there, whether they're animated. You can see how the animations are already included. It says it here, and you'll see when you upload them that they do work. So make sure you tell Rosie that they have animations once you upload them. They're textured and you can see the format. GLTF, OBJ, FBX. Blend just means it's compatible with Blender, which is like a 3D art tool. You don't have to worry about that. And again, license CCO, that's Creative Commons. You don't have to worry about any kind of licensing problems. Next, we have Ambient CG. I also group in Polyhaven with this. These are great resources to get things like skyboxes, textures, and materials, like we mentioned before with the sand ground in, in the desert game. Once you actually do have your 3D models and you want to start making the environment of your game look great, let's say you want to have like a nice surface. When we go to surfaces, you see all of these great options. Again, if you want the material to look like this, you need to like, download these zips. And these zips will have like five, six textures in there that you all have to upload. Each of these textures, again, takes care of a different thing. You don't have to understand what the textures do or anything. Just upload them all to Rosie and then Rosie knows what to do as long as they have unique names. Make sure that the Grass 5 assets are named Grass 5. And then any other assets you download, like I say, I went back. And I also wanted to have like a, some kind of a metal house now. So make sure the metal house assets are named metal house too. Rosie will be able to tell the difference once you do that. And then also, if you want to get a nice sky asset or HDRI, you'll see these ones here. It's pretty much like a image that's like 360 around you in a globe. And it has some very realistic lighting. This is how AAA games that you play have such realistic lightings that they use things like HDRIs to make the lighting match what the image was. Some photographers and etc. will take 360 photos outside, which have some really good lighting baked in. This is JPG. EXR doesn't work so well right now to upload, but JPGs work well for these. And the same thing goes for Polyhaven. Same deal. You have HDRIs, you have textures, and you even have models too. And they can work well. Just make sure you're sticking towards GLTF and GLB. And we have the next asset type I'm personally very excited about is uh, shaders. Shaders are pretty much visual kind of effects that are created by code in your game. You run this program in your game that makes some kind of visual effect change and you can make some games have some crazy effects using them. Here's Shader Toy. It's a great website where shader creators around the world post their best stuff and then they kind of share with communities so people can use it in their games or their apps or even just to make their own shaders. You can see here, here's somebody who just made a fractal shader. This is a pretty trippy effect. You can see the code here. What you do is that you pop it into Rose button and tell Rosie, hey, I have this asset. This one's actually a multi-file shader. So you may not want to use something this complicated but you could if you're willing to do some work copying each other files over but there's plenty of even very small ones that you can use that look great too and i want to show uh, a game that i used the shader for water here is a shader that was probably like 50 lines of code so very small but yeah. makes the game look so much better way more realistic and just impressive next we have mixamo you can actually upload 3d models that aren't animated at all and then mixamo will animate them for you so you can see here that on the right we have an asset here, and on the left, we have different animations. You see that all these different animations are being applied to this asset. And what you can do is that you can upload your character. It supports FPX and OBJ only, unfortunately. But if you do have an FPX asset and OBJ asset and you want to animate it, you can upload it here. It's very well known. It looks so cool. The next few we have here, we have RTF Market, which is another great resource for models. You can see here, they have anvils, shooting targets, 
bunnies, lots of different things that it's being added to very often. And then you, what you can do is you can just download the model directly, or you could even get the 3JS project that includes the asset in it. The license will vary though for asset. This is um, Creative Commons by, which pretty much means that you need to say, hey, this person made it somewhere in the code or on your credits page or whatever. Make sure that you're downloading the ones that are GLTF or GLB and then we're good to go. Okay, and then the last two we have here are a tiny plain asset and a low poly carm that we found. These are great too. I'm pretty sure these ones are FBX though, so make sure you're careful with those. But we just added it there since they have a great license and a CCO and they're really good looking. Essentially, just with this list alone, you could pretty much make almost any game you want. The only limit is like your creativity and how much you want to experiment with these assets. So we covered a lot of different assets, 3D models, materials, textures, shaders, skyboxes. All of these can make your game incredible. Look like AAA. All of the links to all of the websites we discussed are going to be in the description of this video. Try Rosebud AI. Try adding new assets to a game that can definitely spice things up and um, make it just more fun and impressive to play. Thank you again, Jason. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. See you.